We are live. Let me double check, make sure we are streaming. And get it shared out. And there, nope, there's me and Joni. And there's me and you. Okay, now I can see you here. But on the feed, I don't see you. On the Otter's Den page? <laughs> Hang on. Okay, you're on YouTube. There we go. Okay. Now I'm gonna enlarge this one and turn it down. There we go. Hey Renee, glad you made it. How you doing, girl? And and yeah, we'll we'll get you some help tomorrow. We gotta figure it out. We can do this. Um welcome to a brand new installation of the honors den this is something totally new um this is michelle dyer's brainchild uh welcome michelle dyer she is a member of cobra paranormal our uh paranormal team um so welcome thank you for coming on it's greatly appreciated uh what we are going to be doing this evening is we are going to be talking about um serial killers but not the ones you normally hear about you know, you usually hear about Bundy and, and, and all them. Now, we're going to be talking about the little guys, you know, the ones that everybody forgets about, um, the ones that weren't mentioned, the ones that, just, you know, got shoved on a bookshelf and forgotten about. We're, we're going to bring a little attention to them, see if we can learn a little bit about them, compare them to the bigger guys, same motives, same... Um, I want to say excuses, but that's not the right word. Um, same claims. I was possessed. This I was oppressed. Uh, this thing was was haunting me. It made me do this. It wasn't me. All that good kind of stuff. Um, so that is kind of what we're going to be doing, and it's I'm I'm really kind of excited about it. I know I'm going to learn a lot because I'm not. I'm going to be honest with you, ever everybody. I don't know squat about serial killers, except I know a little bit about, and I just lost the name. <laughs> it's right here and right here. Uh, Bogo, um, the clown, um, the one Lorelai does. Lorelai Gacy. Gacy, yeah, John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, I know a little bit about him from, from uh, working with Lorelai on her show. So, um, in fact, I may get a hold of her and see if maybe she wants to come on. I would love for her to come on. Absolutely. I would too. I will get a hold of her probably tonight. Um, you know, she is actually a really huge reason why I'm doing this. Uh, at the moment where I felt defeated, she completely blew new wind into my sails. And here we are. Yes, here we are. And I'm 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 proud of you. I'm proud of me. We actually finally got this going. It took a while. Um, this has been an ongoing plan for quite some time. But Facebook updated. We lost the green button off Facebook Live. Um, this happened. That happened. And uh, I finally got Streamyard to where I could have my guests on. That is. Uh, oh yes, H H Holmes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. Um, see, you, you guys keep me on my toes. Thank you. It's appreciated. Half the time I can't remember my own name. Um, That's why we do uh, reminders. <laughs> absolutely. All right, I'm going to get this shared out quick. Um, so, Michelle, why don't you go ahead? I'm going to let you take over here a little bit and tell us a little bit about, uh, about your plans here. All right. So, um, I kind of wanted to start all of this in hopes that um, with each episode, I am not going to disclose who our serial killer is until we do the episode. So it's going to be very much a learning experience for all, if you will. Um, I'll give some details. I've got some great numbers because Keith is our numbers man. We want to intermix in, like he said, things that, that connect these people um, claims and, and maybe even victims, you know, could it be something, you know, 
as Joni said in your previous show, uh, you know, <laughs> astrological. Could it be some kind of cosmic thing, supernatural, what have you? So I've got lots of facts. Um, I will do my best to keep it not brutal. <laughs> because as we know, obviously, with these people... Uh, getting the court findings and, and all that documentation. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to digest. It will definitely bring you down to that lower vibration. Right. Absolutely. Um, doing the research, though, has proven to be quite interesting in the manner that you just can't make some of these things up. Truthfully, you just can't. So when you are done sharing... You let me know. Okay, give me one second. It's, it's yeah. given me it's given me fits. Imagine that, you know, Imagine tech that. issues, the whole nine yards. It likes to do that. That's right. It gives me time to prepare. There you go. Plus, my laptop is being slow as you know what. Molasses on a winter day. That's a good way to put it. There you go. Can you tell that I'm the one who keeps Keith clean? <laughs> what, you mean my language? Yes. I do my best. I always come up with some really weird things. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, hopefully we're going to get some more people to pop on. Um, and if if anybody can, can share this out for me, that would be phenomenal since I'm having such a difficult job doing it. Thanks, Renee. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Let me do one more thing. I'm going to have to turn something down real quick. There we go. All right. So what I'll do is I'll kind of just give little tidbits before I disclose our name. And if anybody is an avid killer fanatic, I guess, <laughs> if you feel like you know who I may be talking about, interject. Oh, there you go. One so total they, participation. So the guests got to kind of guess who we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it'll get disclosed eventually. Well, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> That's going to be fun, though. Mm -hmm. Guess the serial killer. Guess the serial killer. And yeah, and these are all small scale. I wanted to keep it small because, again, they are often forgotten. So are their victims. And, um, and that's, let, let me interject for one second there. That is another thing um, that we want to do is... Um, pay some tribute to those victims because they, they didn't get, you know, the recognition they deserved. Um, you know, especially if they still haven't been out, you know, found, there may be still some out there that, you know, we don't know. Um, so we really want to, you know, give respects to them. Yeah. Because they don't always disclose their total body count. Mm -mm. You know, uh, nope. it's kind of like being caught and you're like, just tell the truth. You have nothing more to lose. It's a game over. But exactly, will take those secrets right down to the grave with them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you, you'd you'd think if, if they're going down, they they you know tell, but they yeah. don't. Yeah. And do we sound okay? No echo. That there. is a good question to ask. I'm going to get a Wi-Fi booster. That's all there is to it. Yeah, sometimes it's nice. Yes. All right, there we go. Okay. Good enough. Who hops on, hops on, who don't, who don't? Who do we have? Um, right now we have Renee, but it says 
There are three watching in Cobra Paranormal. There are four watching in the Otter's Den. Um, and then one watching on YouTube, which is probably me because I've got it open in the other window. Okay. Good so we got a few people on here. Um, hey, hi, Donna. Thank you for popping in. Um, okay, Donna echo. says, yeah, the big echo. I'm not getting it here. Is, uh, Renee, are you hearing an echo with Michelle? Hey, Michelle, thanks for popping in. Happy Thursday. Go ahead and say something, Michelle. Hello. Echo seems to be a little less, but I can hear it. Hey, Kathy. Um, how many of y'all out there can hear um, an echo with Michelle? And if you can, how big is it? Okay, Renee did. Is it a big echo? Is it a little echo? Maybe I should whisper. <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing. Is Does the echo get worse as she raises her voice, or does it get better as she lowers her voice? Because I don't know if I can adjust my mic. Um, probably in the settings somewhere, but I don't know if you can while you're using it. If that makes sense, I don't know. I'm not techie. Is it bad enough that we need to do something or is, is she understandable? Can you still hear me? I can hear you. Okay. You sound perfect to me. I just turned, like I just messed with the settings. So Okay. will see if that helps. Did that help at all? Because I don't hear myself echoing now. Oh, now I do. Of course. Okay, when you raise your voice, it does get worse. All right. I'll talk quiet. And Renee says, awesome now. So whatever you did. Okay. okay. All these fun little things to figure out. Isn't it? Gotta love tech issues. <laughs> Gotta love tech issues. Perfect. All right. Excellent. All right. So, Michelle, this is your baby. How would you like to begin? Since this is going to be guest the serial killer. Yes, guess the serial killer. So we're going to start in Lawrence, Massachusetts on July 2nd of 1963. Nobody can guess anything from that, really. I'm sure they could if they wanted to. Anyways, that is when our serial killer was born. By the age of six, our serial killer had uh, gone through a broken home situation with his parents. His father was extremely abusive. The mother transplanted the entire family over to Portland, Maine. So, his crime spree has a really, really interesting sequence about it. What was his birth date again? July 2nd of 63. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. All right, so his crime spree <clears throat> technically starts in 79. The other connections to this, which is going to get really interesting as we go through the story in his time log here, um, they weren't discovered until many years after uh, the, the two people that he had actually confessed to murdering. So, in the reality of scoping of things, they actually have his crime spree going from August 22nd of 82 through December 2nd of 83. Short-lived career, right? Yeah. Very short. Very, very short. Um, he wasn't apprehended until January 12th of 1984. 
and the way that they caught him was in a very unusual fashion. Um, we're talking about somebody who transplanted his entire life. What is crazy is that he has a military background. So he's a very, you know, he's not prominent within the military, but he's, he's passed tests. He's psych tests. Yeah. He, he, there were never any red flag indications. In fact, growing up, uh, he was even, you know, in a scout troop, he became a scout master. Um, that sounds familiar because I, I did that myself. That's interesting. Yeah. So that was kind of how he dealt with things. What's interesting about him is that um, while he was also in the military, he, um, he was diagnosed with disorders that seemed to be controlled weren't large enough for anybody to indicate that this person would have a problem. Okay. So we're going to start at the very beginning of his story and I'm going to take it all the way back because I'll explain how his first three encounters get tied in a little bit later. Okay. All right. Ooh. <laughs> I throw it up. We are going to give up that surprise. Yes, Renee, you are absolutely correct. It is none other. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Then our very own here in Omaha, Nebraska, John Juber. You know, it's um, interesting. You know, he was born in Lawrence, Kansas, which is where um, the Winchesters are from on, on Supernatural. Well, he was born in Lawrence, Mass. Massachusetts. Oh, Massachusetts. Oh, yep. okay. I thought he meant Kansas. Yep. Nope. He was in Lawrence, Mass. But that is an odd, you know, an odd connection because that was one of the first things that I had yeah. actually grabbed. So little Johnny at the age of 13 years old actually committed his first murder. It went undiscovered for nearly 24 years. Wasn't it something under the porch? Or am I thinking nope. of something different? Okay. Yep, you're thinking of something different. So at 13 years old, he had um, stabbed a little girl with a pencil. The very next day, he had also taken a razor blade to another girl who happened to be riding her bike down the street. Those all happened in 79. So... It would be a couple of years before he would actually offend again, right? So you're writing it down, right? A 13-year-old with the pencil. Yep, 13. That's they four. They do not disclose at all any information for the girl on the bicycle. Okay. Um, and did, did both of these girls die? Were they okay? They both survived. Okay, good. All right. Both of them survived. So, on August 22nd of 82, Ricky Stetson, he was 11 years old. Um, he was actually Jubert's first successful victim, sadly. Um, he and had he a was... very particular pattern about him because with all of his victims, the things that seemed to come into line, um, he had an extreme... Uh, desire for, you know, he, he claimed to be a sadist, so he liked to stab things, he liked to strangle, and he liked to bite. His primary motivation was hearing them beg for their life or beg for it all to stop. Um, he transplanted out of Portland, where little Ricky was murdered. Uh, joined up in the military, moved over here to Offutt Air Force Base. In September of 83, he had actually had his first uh, Bellevue victim, 13-year-old Danny Joe Eberly. There's four again. Yeah, it's, it's, you're, <laughs> I told you, you're going to love these numbers. 
And September 83, 11, or, you know, 8 and 3, that's 11. His first victim was 11. It, it, this is coming together. Yep. So uh, poor Danny Joe, he was doing his newspaper delivery route. He had only delivered about 70 of his newspapers. His brother was also on the newspaper route. Uh, they didn't notice until later on that he had actually had been missing. And um, all of the locations, obviously, which are known known to me, <laughs> uh, they are pretty much inhabited by homes. They've been built upon, which, you know, could tie in some paranormal ties uh, when you ask locals. Locals always have, have stories there. Uh, it took authorities three days before they found Danny. So then he came upon his second victim, which was going to be a few months later. On December 2nd of 83, uh, Christopher Walden here from Papillion. Now, he had actually, uh, same style, drove up in his vehicle. He never really had much of a motivation as far as, you know, most killers you find trends, uh, hair or eye color, or maybe they remind them of, you know, somebody from their past. There was really nothing fluid other than age that can connect okay. his victims. Um, so for, for poor Danny Joe, of course, you know, same thing. He was stabbed. Uh, he was stabbed about nine times, I believe. He was strangled. Um, Christopher was also bound with duct tape. He was also stabbed. His was worse. Uh, when they actually found him two days later after the murder, uh, he had cut his neck so severely that he was nearly decapitated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. A um, few months later, Jubert decides he's going to make a, a grand mistake. So down the road from my house is a preschool. He had rented a car. He was having car trouble. And... When he rented his car, he decided, you know, he felt like he needed to do something again. So he drove by a preschool, just scoping out the situation. One of the teachers had alerted to it, you know, paying attention. Car had been by, seemed like they were kind of loitering. So she wrote down the plate number. Well, he caught her writing down the plate number and got actually out of the vehicle and approached her and threatened her life she managed to get away from him and go call authorities. <clears throat> so that happened. You don't have that plate number, do you? I do, but I would have to go, I would have to pull out the court records, okay. but yes. And it's a, it's a rented vehicle. So it wasn't even registered to him. There's, there's still going to be some kind of correlation to it. I yep. Bet. Yep. Um, so with that, it brings us right on up to January 11th of 84. That's when he was arrested. Now, he initially was released upon his arrest. Uh, he had given an alibi. They'd done numerous polygraph tests on this guy. Uh, he did fail, but they didn't have enough evidence to substantiate or connect him to his crimes, right? So officers didn't even know about anything that had happened in Portland. It all hinged upon Danny and Christopher. Um, what's interesting is since he was a suspect, they had enough uh, about him to figure out that his alibi had been false. So therefore... <laughs> They were able to obtain search warrants and they went into his dorm on base. And here's where it gets interesting. So there is one single thing that connects all of the murders for John. And it's the most obscure thing. It's almost something out of like movie land. I swear. Okay. <laughs> so 
out, out of all the evidence that was collected, there was uh, the rope that he used to bind his victims with. It was a red rope specifically made in South Korea. Nothing that was shipped over here to the United States. It wasn't a for sale kind of item. So somebody had to have obtained it while they were in South Korea. Well, the connection is, is that his scout master had actually given him that rope. So they had the connection to the scoutmaster, and the scoutmaster said, no, I gave that to John. They ran the fibers, and it matched. Wow. Yes. So how it all came to be and connect is that as they're talking about this rope and, and the bite marks that these two boys had sustained, the brutal manner in which that they were murdered, Everything all kind of tacked together. And the FBI was actually doing a seminar. And they were then able to get local authorities in Portland because they were at this seminar. They said, hey, we want you to take a look at a couple of cases that we have cold in our files. Okay. They took the bite prints from Danny Joe and from Christopher, compared it to Ricky Stetson, and the other two victims that he later confessed to killing in Portland, and he was also nailed for those three. So, <laughs> one fiber and bite marks connected a whole case. He's, That's crazy. It, it, it truly is. It truly is. Now, the two disorders that he's actually diagnosed with, he was diagnosed with OCD. Um, he, you know, he was a very methodical cleanup mess kind of person, right? So there's mm -hmm. not a lot um, that can really, you know, had it not been for that fiber, there would not have been a whole lot to go upon, right? Um, if that car hadn't been registered to him that he rented, you still might not have anything. Um, but our dear John, he actually is diagnosed with a schizoid personality. So he's not full on schizophrenic. He doesn't see things. He never claimed to have the devil in him. He never claimed to be persuaded uh, to do these things, you know, within evil intentions or, you know, it didn't take manipulation or convincing as most people would actually turn around and say. The voice is in your head telling you to do right. it. Right, right. Um, with a schizoid personality, those people are very disconnected, very unengaged, very secluded and alone they don't like crowds they just kind of step off they're they're very much lone sheep very quiet yes very you know very out there um what's odd about that is when you take a look at it um if you know anything about like cancer personalities because that's his zodiac he's a cancer uh <clears throat> i'm a cusper so i'm a cancer leo <laughs> but they're not quiet. They're very outgoing, very trendy. Do we know what his um, moon and rising were? I don't. We'll have um, to have. Uh, we could probably pull his his uh, birth certificate and. Yeah, let's get let's get, get that his birth date to Joni, and she can tell us. Maybe one of those signs is, you know, right. You know, if, if one of them Scorpio. That that will definitely explain the 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 loner you know, hiding at home. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, you know, like running all of these numbers, like I said, you start to find these trends or these patterns. So you know, here you have a guy whose parents are divorced when he's six. Um, he commits his first act when he's thirteen. And then every victim after that all stays within that age range. 11, That's, 13, we've got, you know, a 12-year-old. 
it may have set the president, you know, precedence in his mind at that time, still developing. Um, and that's just what stuck. Right. That right. was the first. So that's what stuck. That's what he did. That's who he went after. That was his victim. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a little known fact, or, or maybe so, now that we have a few fans out here that actually know Jubert, uh, he's actually the second person to be uh, convicted for the death sentence in Nebraska. And he was actually the second person to die by the electric chair. Um, his various appeals and then also the extreme damage that the electric chair had actually done to him uh -huh. was one of the reasons why uh, Nebraska threw in, you know, hey, is this cruel and unusual? We need to take another look at our execution laws. Okay. Um, that makes sense. So when they had electrocuted him, he had ended up with a two inch blister on the top of his head and all the way around his ears. Wow. Um, so he was, you know, yeah, I mean, it was a pretty brutal ending, um, which actually it all came to a close on July 17th of 96. What was that date? July 17th of 96. Yeah, Renee, he, he was an extremely smart guy. I mean, um, if, if you've ever watched any of his proceedings, um, I'll share a little snippet of what I do have. But uh, there was one author who was actually able to obtain access to him and um, get pictures of his actual drawings, which... They did a whole news segment on it. Uh, you know, growing up in that age, I wasn't really allowed to watch it because I was, you know, born July 24th of 83. So I was just a babes. But um, it was enough, you know, here in, you know, for our surrounding cities, Omaha, Papillion, La Vista, Bellevue, we weren't very big then. It was all very tight knit and very, you know, shocking to the community. I mean, you had a lot of folks out there who were just positively worried. And his demeanor was so calm. Uh, it was like the calm quiet. He didn't display much rage. Um, in fact, when the accounts, you know, when it came to actually disclosing or admitting to, you know, some of what he had done. He had done it in such a calm demeanor and manner that uh, the investigators and attorneys would tell you that, that it just chilled them to their core. That would be weird. Because he was so calm. And there's, <clears throat> there's one interview where, you know, every, everybody gets their final say before they're executed. Um, he simply had said, uh, you know, I don't know if my death will bring any peace to the families for what I have done, but I apologize. Okay. And that was it. Um, he didn't cry. He didn't, you know, he did file for appeals. He, he did go for, you know, the habeas corpus and all of that. Obviously, he wasn't going to get out of any of it. Um but again, just that calm, cool, collected, didn't phase him, which would speak to the schizoid personality disorder. Um, just not connected to an event or a person or, or anything to that degree. Uh, some of the court proceedings, they were sealed off quite heavily for a really long time. Yeah, okay. again, very intelligent person. I mean, he had... A thought process about him again he was very methodical very uh it's it's almost creepy how yeah. how clean everything was with that and yet yeah. the manner of of him uh being openly you know admittive about everything that he had done the thing i find interesting about his iq 123 one two three um, numbers like that, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, when you see consecutive numbers like that, growing numbers, that means there's a change about to happen. Um, maybe, maybe he would have stopped. Um, maybe he would have changed victims. Um, that, that's kind of what I'm getting from that for some odd reason. I don't know why. 
Well, and that's so funny because, um, well, it's not funny, like, ha ha funny, but we have a, a park down here, uh, just on the corner <clears throat> and where I had gotten most of my information as far as like the victims. And, um, I don't, you know, I don't want to disclose too much. I, I do know on a personal level, um, the caretaker of the park, um, Eberly and Walden Park, it's down here off of uh, 69th Street in, in La Vista. And, you know, going in the number of, uh, you know, the, the sequence or whatever, you know, you've got two little boys, um, you know, September. So you've got nine. That's when Danny was taken. Uh, in December was when Christopher was taken. So, you know, the six really doesn't kind of fit in there. But if you did the math, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting choice. Um, that means something. <laughs> Thanks, Renee. <laughs> Add them all up, you get 29. Two and nine is what? Boom, 11. I, I, I felt something when I asked about the plate. Thank you so much for that. 11. So, Renee, what do you know about, obviously, you know a good deal about Jubert. We, you and I, we've needed to talk more, girl. <laughs> yep. We should have him on the show, just saying. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, I can bring other people on, just yep. saying. What about now? Renee, would you like to pop on a little bit? I don't buy it. <laughs> Serial killer joke there. I made sure you had your rabies shot. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm a Scorpio. I got to have that. But yeah, and it's funny, uh, you know, because I had always been very investigative just on him in particular. And, you know, you had mentioned Lawrence and the connection with uh, Winchester Brothers and my connection Which? to Winchester is what? You are a descendant. I am a descendant, yes. Of Mrs. Winchester. A of the Winchester descendant. So the connections here are mm -hmm. just nuts. You know, and this is how we find our, our paranormal cases. We will find so many connections to these people and ourselves. It, it's absolutely crazy. It's like the universe is saying, here, you are the people that have to help this person. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's kind of the way it was with the mechanics when they came up, you know, same thing. You know, yeah. And, and speaking of the 11th, that was the day that he was apprehended, January 11th of 84. Mm-hmm. 11's my number, born on 11-11. That too. That, that actually is really kind of hidden hard for me because of what I went through with my possession and the thoughts that went through this head. And yeah, I'm, gl I'm just going to say I'm glad I got the help that I did. Well, and uh, having been someone who's known you um, during that, so I knew you before and I knew you after mm -hmm. um, we transitioned together. <laughs> um, I can say, you know, at the point where things really started to take a dive, mm -hmm. you were disconnected. Uh, we had a few investigations together and I had seen you in complete action. We interacted, we all interacted. And then it was like, boom, you were just sucked right out of the whole game done. You, you were disconnected. So I can see that. I could feel it coming on. And when I did, I didn't know why, what was coming on, but I knew that I shouldn't be around certain people. 
I shouldn't be around my teammates at the time. I was on a different team. Um, you know, I shouldn't be around this person. I shouldn't be around that person. I didn't know why at the time, but that was it trying to take over and me trying to protect. I, I figured that out now. Um, so I was actually trying to help myself. Um, I just didn't realize it. Oh, Renee, you got kicked off of Facebook. That's not good. Um, if, if you want to come on, I can send you an invite. Are you on your phone? Are you on a laptop, computer? What are you on? All I do is I send you a link to Messenger. You click it. You show up in this nifty little box on my screen, and I hit add. And then guess what? Ta-da! You're on. Or you got something going on. Need a different cup. <laughs> Eating dinner. <laughs> you eat okay. Dinner. <laughs> okay. We'll let you off the hook this time. Maybe this one time. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of these things, with it being close to home, I have far more details uh, than what, what most would have. Uh, you know, I've done extensive interviews with the families of the victims. And... Um, it's hard, you know, when you're, when you're talking to the families and, 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 you know, knowing who these kids were and who, you know, who they could have been, um, yeah. as a parent, you know, you just, you could sit there and agonize over all of those details. Uh, when I first started on this case, uh, I had a lot of sleepless nights because going through everything, um, being an empath and being, you know, when you can sit there and unfortunately put yourself in somebody else's shoes, the terror, the fear, the pain, the, you know, all of those things that you just never want to wish upon someone. And, and it was, it was, a, uh, you know, he, he, he was, he was extremely brutal. Yeah. Um, my friend, <laughs> he could have. So he, when he actually took, you know, Danny off of the paper route, it was really early in the morning, like five, six in the morning. So it might've still been dark. Yeah. So, uh, in some of the, uh, the trial proceedings, it was said that he, he did follow him for a period of time. Um, he followed him. He watched him. He was found, you know, here's another number connection. So uh, Danny was actually found four miles away from his bicycle. So, and, and the, the way they, they knew he was missing was because, you know, his brother obviously went to go look for him because they're supposed to finish their paper out together. And all he saw was the bike. I was just going to ask if they found the bike. Um, you know, he, it's not, you know, it was said that he didn't really stalk for days. Um, you know, here in our little small towns as they were back then because they were literally just very small communities. They weren't the big monsters they are now. Right. Um, it would have been easy to pick up on somebody's pattern. So it was very much described in a fashion of, you know, when he felt he needed to do something, he drove around, he pinpointed a victim, held a knife up to him, put tape over their mouth, and away they went. And that can be that quick. Yeah. Yeah. That quick. Couple minutes, boom, done. Yeah, which is he never really had a premeditation. Uh, you know, in the in the sense of this is who it's going to be. I'm planning this out, you know, no motivation like that. It was Just his, his pattern was I see it, I do it. Okay, that makes sense. Um <sighs> opportunity. Yeah. He used opportunity in order to, you know find his victims to, you know, do his crimes. It was all blind opportunity. Mm -hmm. Pure chance, you know, just like driving by uh, and loitering around the preschool to, to get another victim, you know, 
that's why it's always, you know, you know, it's important to bring recognition to the smaller ones because even though they were stopped earlier in their career, it's little tidbits like that. I couldn't tell you how many times I go through my day and on blonde autopilot, literally, you know, I don't pay attention to my surroundings. I don't pay attention. You know, the only yeah. time that I do is when I have my daughter within my eyesight, but right. A lot of people, you know, that's, yeah. they're, they're walking through life in autopilot. They're on their phones, walking down the street. They're sitting in their car at a stop sign or parked on their phone, not paying any attention. Somebody could come up mm -hmm. something on a rag. Boom. That's yeah. it. That quick, Absolutely. you know, um, you know, me and Joni were talking about, you know, especially this month, um, you know, with, with the Mars retrograde and, you know, two full moons along with the new moon, um, you know, those energies are going to be amplified by, you know, Mars and Aries. Uh, people are going to be amplified, um, temper, anger. Um, I wouldn't doubt if we saw more murders. So it's, you know, we mentioned. You know, I have, I have a cross reference on, you know, for charting. Um, that you know, might... we have all the dates of when they were taken, when they were murdered. Um, Joni can help with that. Yeah. Um, I mean... And for the record, I did try to plug his information into a birth chart. It would not give me any information. It would not function. Hmm. So we're evidently not supposed to know tonight. Yeah, evidently. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, he had a he had a long enough career, but it was it was a very short one, stifled very quickly. Um, but what if he wouldn't have got caught? Right, and and he said in a court, uh, not a court interview, but in a jail interview, because they did have the one author that was able to gain access to him and his diary. Um, I can't think of the name of the book, but uh, Renee, you would absolutely love it if you haven't read it yet. Um, but the, you know, he had told the guy, I'm really thankful that I haven't gotten out because if so, if they ever set me free, I would kill again. So that, that tells us he could not control himself. He had no right. self-control over what he was doing. Um, which again, brings into question, was there something oppressing him? Was there something, you know, paranormal affecting him that he didn't realize? I, I, you know. We don't know. Was it just him and his messed up schizoid personality? We don't know. Um, and now that he's gone, we're not ever going to be able to ask him. Yeah. And, and Renee, to uh, answer both of those questions, I don't think either boys came from a broken home. Um, I'll find out for certain. But they both did have like a sandy brown colored hair. Um, what color was his? Juber, he, he had brown hair. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Did he have any siblings? You have your laptop running, right? Or your phone? My laptop. He does have, um, there is a segment on YouTube, which I thought about extremely late. Um... <laughs> about getting to you where you know you could even roll the clip of of his last interview and they have the full audio on you know on his last statement right before he was executed wow yeah yeah um and you can just hear it in his voice like that calm demeanor We could put that link on there. Yeah. Yes. I killed him. If you let me out, I'll go do it again. Something like that. Yeah, I mean. Just no, no feeling, no empathy, no no emotion just no just yeah. talking yeah and his final statement it was just as calm as my voice is now you know i don't know if my death will bring peace to any of the families and i'm sorry 
At least he did say that, but was it meant? You know, that's that's a big question right there, and, and that's something we're never going to know. No. Um, you know, that that's where this mind has been that that's a really serious question for me. You know, was he really sorry for what he did? Was he able to feel that emotion? Was he, was he able to feel that, you know, luckily I can, um, back in the day, I could tell you, I was sorry. 95% well, of the time. Um, probably wasn't. And in his, in his diary, that the one author was able to gain access to uh -huh. again. Um, he drew, he was a, he was a very artistic person. I'll give him credit for that. Unfortunately, uh, he redrew the bodies of his victims in their final position. So he had that memorized, mm -hmm. which makes sense, I guess. You know, that's that's kind of a traumatic thing. You would remember that. Yeah. But the fact and, that he do it, you know, especially if he did it without any emotion. Right. That, that would show a total lack of empathy. So therefore, he probably could not be sorry. Yeah. And one of my friends um, owned a farm just outside city limits. And, uh, you know, we would tear it up as we were kids. As we were kids, we had four wheelers. We had nothing better to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we always got to use the, the fields that were out of service for the season, you know, because farmer's rule is rotate crop plow and everything else. So we got to tear up the fields that weren't in access. And um, we didn't know right away. Uh but that farmland is actually where they had found one of the boys. Okay. And uh, I believe it was Christopher because it was the ditch right off the road. And I mean, that's kind of what started everything because then I thought, well, how does paranormal connect into these tragic events. Is it a stone tape theory? Are their spirits stuck? Can I help them if they are? Um, you know, you, you, is it something that's going to have to agonizingly play over and over until whenever? Which leads back to what you said. The, is that the stone tape theory? I believe stone tape theory. Yeah. That's like um, recording on an eight track tape. Yeah. Uh, when the conditions are right, it records. Um, you know, there there's quartz in in stone. They use quartz in computer uh, memory and in, in computer chips. Um, it it can record energy. Um, you know, that's what computer programs are is is energy essentially. And when the conditions are you know atmospheric conditions are just right, that scenario will replay itself. Right. Um, it's what they call an echo. Uh, we used to call it a, uh, a, uh, yeah, that's a residual. We used residual to call it residual hauntings. 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 Now we call it an echo because it's not actually a haunting. It, it's right. just energy being played back. Um, they're not intelligent. They're not there. It's just, it's just that event being played back. You might feel the emotion. If you see it, you, you, I'll guarantee you, you can feel that emotion, especially if you're empathic. Yeah. But it, it's not, it's not a haunting. It's an echo. Yeah. yeah. Which holds its own, you know, level of, because, you know, doing what we do, helping who we help, you know, that's all we ever want to do is help people. doesn't I'm matter sure. if they're dead or alive, frankly. Yeah. But yeah, that, uh, that's something we get to do. We, we When we go and help a client, not only do we get to help the client, but we also get to help those who have passed on. They may be stuck. They may have a message that they, you know, they refuse to go into the light because they have to give this message. Sometimes we can do that for them and then we can cross them over and help them. And that that's phenomenal. You can help both both the, the client and, and the spirits there. Yeah. And that's 
you know, that's, uh, you know, a part of the whole uh, many 50 questions that I have about all of this, you know, as we, as you and I talk about it more and more and more, uh, you know, instances like this, you know, is there something if I go during that particular time where they were taken, uh, if I go down during anniversaries, if I get recordings, you know, if I do whatever, if there's a message that is left behind, mm -hmm. you know, then you come along the path of, uh, you know, talking to family, giving some sense of closure if possible. Um, you know, nobody wants to feel like their family members are stuck or their loved right. ones. Right. And, and that's always what's hard, you know, kind of a conflict of interest, you know, in doing this kind of an endeavor. Uh, yeah, because, you know, we don't want to go talk to them and bring it all back up if they've gotten past it, you know, um, that's that's kind of a sticky situation there. Um, but like you were saying, you know, what was the weather like that day? Can we hit that place on a day where that weather, you know, the environment, pressure, the clouds, a storm, whatever, can we hit that place on that, you know, in that same weather application to see if it replays? You know, there's all kinds of scenarios to think about. Yeah. And, you know, uh, what has been a true blessing is uh, going through all of this and, and starting down the path of, of all of this. <laughs> this has been a thing many years in the making here. Uh, talking to any of the family members for either boy, uh, they are really good people. And, and it is very much uh, a remembrance and not... You know, it's not as though they've moved beyond things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You, you know, how do you move beyond something like that? That um, would be difficult. I couldn't imagine. But they are, they, you know, if, if somebody wants to have a conversation, they will have the conversation. Sure. You Absolutely. Know, keep, keep the memory going. Um, hey, open your eyes so that you are not in my position um, is, is a very strong message, you know, <clears throat> from some of them. Uh, yeah, I get, I get that one. You know, that, yeah. that's one of the reasons I, I started doing this was to, you know, help people and, you know, they're having paranormal issues um, because, you know, I've dealt with it all. I've been through it all. I can, I can help them. You know, the team can help them. Um, if, if, if I can help them, you know, not only with the paranormal, but also with, you know, relationship issues, the paranormal can have huge effects on that. And, you know, if I can get one person to understand, oh, oh wait, okay, I see the connection. If they go and get some help, if they can save that relationship, I help one, maybe two people, all this is worth it. You know, a lot of people out there hear me talk and think I'm nuts. Well, you know what? I may be. All the best people are. But, but you know, a, a common trend in paranormal, at least that I picked up on throughout the years of doing what we do, uh, it's very much a, you know, in a sense, if you think about it, if you really want to tie together like serial killers and paranormal, the one goal is a divide and conquer. It's not like they're doing these things. Uh, it, they try to tear you apart from everything. That division. Yes. It's, it's a divide and conquer. And it's really no different than, you know, say a serial killer stalking their own prey. I'm yeah. going to wait until I can get them alone. Yeah. That, that, that little kid gets a block away from his house. He's that much closer. You know, he's separating that family that much more. Another block is that much more. Um, you know, until they're far enough away, um, an entity will take a couple. It doesn't, you know, father, son, husband, wife, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Best friends, doesn't matter. And we'll interject. He will whisper something in your ear. He'll put a doubt in there and then that'll start an argument. Guess what? There's a little bit of division. Mm -hmm. Okay. He gets to feed off of that jealousy, that anger, that hatred, whatever it was. And he gets stronger. So he plants a bigger one and it gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger. And, gets bigger, and then boom, perfect storm hits and all hell breaks loose and yeah. it's done before you even know what hits you. And you don't know why afterwards. It's it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, since we've disclosed our killer, we've disclosed our victims, uh, I hope I didn't go into too much detail on some of those 
things. I don't think that I did. I tried. No, to I don't think so either. I think you did really fine. Respectful for them. Uh, is there anyone out there? We already know Renee. <laughs> Who is wanting more information or something more that they would like to know about this particular case? Also known as any questions. Any questions. You know, see, yeah, so I found it very interesting uh, that, you know, here you have a, a, a killer who was born July 2nd of 63 and then executed July 16th of 96. You don't yeah, find right. a lot of correlation, but yeah. what's interesting about that is, if, <clears throat> you know, it all happened within cancer. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. That is definitely interesting. Um, Renee says, no, she doesn't have any questions. You did great. Yay. I'll grab that link. If anyone is interested, let me know. I certainly won't put it up if there is no interest in it uh, or if you don't want to hear it. But I can grab that link of his final words. And uh, yeah. That'll have to be something that we have to think about, you know, if we can get those little snippets to uh, interject within, you know, our little storyline here, play them. How do you spell right. his name, Michelle? Last name? Yes. J-O-U-B-E-R-T. Uh, John Jubert, Nebraska death row interview. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I do have the link. I can put it in the comments. If anybody wants to hear it. You know, it's... Uh, I'm just going to say that, you know, K-13, I completely agree with you. <laughs> it's funny. That's how I know you. <laughs> but <laughs> it is very interesting uh, that he's, you know, a lot of that they blamed on, on that schizoid personality disorder because, you know, his being so connected to being OCD but not connected to anything else is, is – a different variety it's it is very i'm not going to say uncommon because there are there are various other people in the in that same ship there that you know have almost like a a, a double personality if you will a night and day uh, hang on a second because something hit yeah, right here that. And then I saw the comments. I've never had that happen before. Please tell me that other people are seeing the comments from the quote common or quantum generator. Yeah. Okay. That's coming in off of the YouTube mm -hmm. channel. You know, uh, Renee, they actually said that uh, his friends were very limited to uh, who he did scouts with and even the scoutmaster, which whom he was close to, um, obviously. Uh, that was pretty much the only thing that he really connected with. So he did have a really disgruntled past. Yeah, from what little I was able to obtain, you're talking about somebody coming from a household where um, 
the lack of uh, mother's love probably came into play. Um, not that it's an excuse by any stretch of an imagination, but when you have a single mom who's probably, you know, breaking her back to support family, uh, you know, coming from a, an abusive relationship, there's a little bit of damage there. You know, at six years old, you're old enough to, to retain those memories. And six years old. Why does six years old just? Because that's when I was possessed is when I was six years old. That's what I thought. Okay. Where did that come from? I, I must have missed a con. Uh, I can't even talk right now. Uh, comment. That's what I'm trying to say. That's the word I'm trying to say. Where, where did the six come from? Uh, so he was, Jubert was six when his parents got divorced. Okay. And okay. that's when she transplanted him over to Portland, Maine from Mass. So if you're alone and you're feeling a little bit secluded, you're going to ask for anything to come in. Yeah. Same thing. Those comments are really weird. Are we the only ones seeing these? I hope not. Renee, are you seeing those comments? <laughs> yeah, and so as far as the Scoutmaster uh, being entangled up with that rope, so Jubert actually had that on his property for quite some time. Um, I could do a little bit of research on said rope. Uh, when I started down a small little series of rabbit holes. Um, and I actually started writing about it, that that was going to be the basis of, of the title was, you know, a single red strand that it connects them all. Uh, something not commercially bought. It is, it is a very strange thing for a person to keep something so odd but then again if he had it and you know had this rope and it was somehow connected this is my theory somehow connected to his first victim uh which was the uh, 11 year old ricky you know that you know sometimes these killers have these things that just they they keep it almost seems like tokens of of remembrance that seems to be a thing that i pick up on they, they keep that item just to trigger and and relive it yeah i i get that uh what was it the movie i think it was the movie frequency old movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it. One of my all time favorites. Uh, but you know, you had a killer on the loose and he did, he kept all those little trinkets of, of his victims, uh, you know, and it is, it's just for them. It's whether it's a, a way to calm that bloodlust or to relive that excitement of the moment. One may never know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm a weirdo, but he would have he would have been an interesting he would have been a person I would have liked to have dissected mentally. Just, mentally. Mentally. Yeah, mentally just to let's dive a little bit deeper here, you know. Yes. Um, I think that I'll get the name of the book. I'll post it in the comments once I have it. Uh, the author that had written about him did uh, quite a bang up job on, you know, getting as much information out of John as he could, you know, before his death. And then again, you know, they did the interview as well, which I believe only one media news outlet locally was able to gain access to that interview. Mm -hmm. I believe that was channel three. I could be mistaken. But I believe it was Channel 3 that let out that interview. Interesting. We've got a three right there.
And that quantum <laughs> generator is going to make me a little batty. <laughs> well, I'm actually understanding everything that, that they're saying. Um, that's the first time that's ever come through on us. Yeah. And I just did a search on Facebook for that and it doesn't come through. Um, nothing shows up. So I need to look into this some more after we get off the show. So right now we'll we'll just keep doing our thing because it it's, it keeps taking my attention away. My apologies. So I'm not going to pay attention to the comments right now. I'm going to speak to this guy here, and 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 yeah, let let let's rock the show here. Um, next time I'm up there, let's run by some of these sites. Yeah, you know where they are. Um, I, I'd like to see them. I'd like to walk up to them. I'd like to see what I can feel. Yeah. I mean, and we could even, uh, you know, for the sake of our show as a follow-up, uh, we may or may not have plans come Saturday, but we could certainly go live if anyone has any interest in wanting to actually see those locations, um, the park, their namesake park. Um, I know, the locations of where they were found and the locations of where they were taken. I also have uh, the location of the preschool and where his car was parked when he, when that plate number was written down. And it is awesome that that preschool teacher had the, um, I'm going to say mother's intuition. She's always around kids. Yes. And mother's intuition. It's one of the strongest intuitions out there, you know, because a mother, especially back, you know, it, you know, centuries ago, you know, they had to be able to protect their kid. They had to know if that child was in danger. And that is, that is exactly what that's for. Um, well, and that's how it's been to devastating call. around here is because, like I said, small community, quiet. I mean, right, he literally rocked the foundation of Bellevue Papillion, Omaha, and La Vista. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember being younger and my, you know, my mom we were not allowed to even walk to school after, you know, hearing about any of it. I mean, I would have only been a year. Yeah, I would have been a year old. Um, but my aunt, who's actually upstairs right now, she, uh, we were talking about it the other night because obviously I had to prep for the show here and, uh, she will tell you that all the way up until the day that he was executed, she lived in fear because that her. is how jarring and how profound it shook our community because, you know, just like <clears throat> not, you know, not to name drop or anything, but like the Velisca Axe murder house, something still very unsolved or whatever, it doesn't happen. And so then when it does, it changes the whole outlook that you have. It makes total sense. Peggy, yeah. Did you did you watch the uh the interview there? Ouch. <clears throat> Yeah, and like I said, he was a very calm, you know, collected demeanor. He never displayed much emotion. Uh, and that was one of the things that, that you know, the lead sheriff investigator, uh, if you were ever able to talk to him um, personally knowing him, that's, you know, obviously was something I was able to do, you know, to get, it was just... It doesn't sound like he would be somebody that, that you would want to necessarily encounter even in a social setting. Right. Uh, without anybody being around. You know, that's just how off-putting and, and very secluded his uh, demeanor was. And even how he interacted with people. Um, a lot of the Air Force men and stuff would tell you that he wasn't very interactive, you know, with anybody uh, barrack lifestyle nothing he he just 
He wasn't. Kept to himself, and that was it. Yeah. I get that one. <clears throat> yeah, you and when you listen to that interview, you will you'll get that vibe that I'm talking about. It's it's a very yeah. you you'll pick up on it right away the moment he starts speaking. You you can be around hundreds of other people in barracks and in, in training, what have you, but yet you're still alone. Right. You're still by yourself. See, on that, that was the, the interesting thing uh, that had always captured my attention with this is that, you know, here you have somebody who was not only intelligent, uh, he obviously had a composure about him that was, uh, you know, not necessarily steadfast. It's not mm -hmm. worth looking for, but you know what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Um, and and yet these things get overlooked, which has to make you go. I wonder if we're really accepting into the military. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. There's so many people, you know, going in um, from so many different parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Different ages, different this, different that, and you, you know, you try to do your best to, you know, catch anybody that has mental issues. Right, do the vetting and everything. How many people have been through the military that have passed all that vetting? Have been intelligent enough to pass everything, still get through the military, get out, and then go on. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and do this kind of stuff before, yeah. after, what have you. Um, you know, there, there's ways to, to get by those tests if you're intelligent enough. Yeah. Um, you know, back when I was in high school, I got in trouble for alcohol. You know, I got an MIP. Judge made me go take an alcohol education class. Okay. Well, what it amounted to was they taught you how to drink and not get caught. Right. <laughs> but before, I had to do the three hour test to determine, you know, if I was an addict, I was nuts, what have you. And they, they took the same, so many questions, changed them around and kept asking the same things over and over. I looked at it. I'm like, how do you want me to answer this? Mm -hmm. and I was like, what do you mean? Do you want me to answer this? So it pleases the judge. Do you want my honest answers? Do you want me to answer this so it pleases you? So you can tell the judge that I'm okay. How do you want me to answer this? Because this is what you're trying to do. And it's like, you know what? Let's just go in the other room. Like, okay. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Renee brought up something, you know, an extremely good point. Uh, love how he Eight. enlisted in the Air Force in August, which is Eight. the same month that Stetson's body was found. Yes. Paying homage to his victim. I believe so. And it's and it's funny. And I always say funny, but it's not a funny combination. Uh, I, I don't mean funny and haha. But um, yeah, exactly. So they say his motivation uh, to get and enlist into the military was to evade the murders that he had already committed in Portland. Now, he has been connected to two. He at least admitted to three additional non-murders, but where he had, uh, you know, like the little girl that he had stabbed with the pencil, the other one that he had cut with the razor blade. Uh, he caught a jogger, a college-age jogger, and you know, was able to uh, stab her, but she was able to get away and, and get help. And he flew completely under radar. Uh, but then he gets transferred out, comes over here to Bellevue. So it's, it's just, it's all kind of crazy in an intermixed sort of way. Yes, 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 it is. And it's it's even crazier for me because I've I've been almost kind of right there in, in those shoes in a way, you know, with what I went through back then. And and the, the time frame is is so similar. You know, the, the six years old and, and the divorcing parents. And it's I, I have a feeling this is something that I need to do to finish working through some things. 
and you yeah. instigated it, and thank you. Sure. How's that? <laughs> I'm thanking you for instigating something. You're you're welcome. <laughs> Hardly ever is that a common theme. <laughs> you no, know, because I've I've put the commonalities together before. I've worked through some things. But it's it's hidden. There there's something else out there that I need to work through yet. Well, you know, like the other case uh, that I have rolling um, that I'm not going to disclose because it's for another episode on another time. But uh, we started discussing some of those similarities as well. And, you know, connections to the metaphysical, the paranormal, uh, whatever your variety of the divine may be. There are some serious connections, even um, astrological. And you're talking about things that can be connected all the way back to Greek gods and goddesses, Egypt, pharaohs and Pharisees. I mean, there are so many connections that my overthinking mind just dives right on into that I'm like, ooh, ooh, look. <laughs> look, look at, oh, I'm buzzing. Look at how many times you, me, the team, have been tossed back to Egypt and uh, you know the Egyptian gods and, and goddesses and and scarabs and and opening portals to return them and people are going to think that statement is nuts. It just came out, wasn't supposed to. Um, <clears throat> but you put everything together, you know each. Uh, words they're in here. They're in here. Um, well, I mean, you yeah, about Saturday. Um, the the Egyptians, the Sumerians, the Egyptians, the Sumerians, the Christians, you know, all of the religions all have similar stories. You know, the, the natives, the, you know, all have similar creation stories. They all have similar flood stories. Right. Um, in order for that to happen, there's got to be some kind of connection to everything. Um, it's all interconnected. Spider grandmother, you know, she spun the web of life of the universe. Um, scientists are proving there is a web. It's called Higgs, the Higgs field. You know, the Higgs boson, the God particle. They are proving that there is something out there that holds the universe together. We are all connected. What happens if I poke this desk? Something happens on the other side of the universe to match that in a photon. It is it, the, the science will amaze you. I'm gonna shut up because I'm gonna go off on a tangent. <laughs> Just putting it out there. We do do that a lot, but that's okay. But yeah, when you come up, actually, I've uh, and it, it goes a little bit deeper. So, you no, know, obviously, I haven't divulged all of my my grand escapades here and and maybe uh we'll just do a continuation on the topic if there's interest if there's yeah, not, we we move right on along but uh i i've got it as far as you know pretty much like a crime scene map so nice. i've got a map where all the lines and you can just see you know when you start to map things out within a connection you start to find a pattern that emerges I want to see those longitude and latitude numbers of each individual site. Okay. I will find you a connection. Yeah, I mean, there's, and, and, and they say that there's a lot within that as well, but uh, maybe Late it's life. best to know. Maybe it's not, but cool story. I'm a dork who likes to lay out all this crap when I have free time. <laughs> Hey, there's nothing dorky about that. You know, um, ley lines, energy, you know, there's mm -hmm. energy lines. Are these places close to those? Did that have something to do? You know, my mind is rolling right now. They're normally and, and working this into the, you know, his physical psyche, looking at myself, um, what would I do? You know, I would go to where there's the most energy. And, you know, and that's, that's a great thing. Uh, most people do it unknowingly as well. Yeah. I just got to be there. 
or I'm going to choose here, not even knowing where that that's going to lead them. Absolutely. Um, obviously, his goal was to get out of Portland. He was already on his path. Uh, what got him started at, you know, at the fresh young age of 13 years old, that's still quite a mystery. Mm -hmm. Uh, while he was talkative, he is also not talkative. Um, there's some, there's, there's more interesting facts about this guy, but we'll, we'll, We'll divulge all of that or we'll discuss all of that on on our time there uh, just because we'd be here all night if we started. <laughs> yeah. Um, Heather KY 22, I assume that's Kentucky. Um, here, I'll just throw it up. Oh, perfect. Hey, Heather, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah, see, and those are the astounding correlations that I always try. I wasn't doing it so much on an astrological plane because I'm going to be just flat truthful. I did not start thinking about astrology or zodiacs or anything like that until Joni, until we started diving into yeah. birth charts and everything else. I mean, uh, then I was like, oh, my gosh, there's another aspect to look at. So then I started yeah. going through and ripping out all those dates and I was like, we're going to, we got to write this down because they mean something, um, you know, times and places. It all converges at a perfect moment for some reason, whether, absolutely. you know, good or bad. Yeah, absolutely. And, and how many times, you know, one question in my mind is how many times did he think about doing something and didn't have the opportunity to, didn't have the place, didn't have the energy, right. didn't have the, didn't have his rope with him. Um, you know, yeah, that was see, important to him. And Renee just, you know, she made another a valid point there uh, that, yeah, he did have fantasies and all of that. So what's interesting is that you have a young person, and I know we talked about this on Monday, I believe it was, uh, when we talked about, you know, introducing this whole series that we're doing right now is uh, – you know, how, how much the mental health care is overlooked, um, you know, whether it have been, you know, say a mom in denial. No, my kid's not a monster. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody wants to look at their kid and absolutely think that. Um, even if you see it. You know, if you try to get them help, how many times, even here recently, without divulging too much information, personally, have I been let down in the medical industry? I mean, healthcare is just, for as good as it is, it's not good enough. Yeah, I will totally agree with you. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of things get overlooked. You've got kids. Now, say he, you know, this isn't what happened. He obviously had parents he was not in a foster type situation right. uh, but you do have kids that end up in the system that age out and then poof after that 18th birthday we don't care what happens to you that's the way it is boom there's you know, a streak it's it. sad it's it, it is really it's extremely sad uh not only for everybody else that it may affect but you know even the person having to deal with it and you know, to be locked in one's head is not a very nice place at times um especially this one yeah <laughs> there's some pretty dark holes Let me out. I'm stuck in your pocket. <laughs> i need to re-download re that ringtone i really do that's awesome but yeah i mean you're talking about a gentleman who uh he's had a very long life with trauma he's had a very long life with devastating factors you know uh he's a sadist he's you know he has these fantasies he's got all of these things exactly um, <clears throat> you know i hate to bring up the correlation but it's almost like reading a book of 50 shades of gray without all of the fun in betweeners mm -hmm. but um that's where all that stuff kind of comes from is you know, when when you see something like that, I absolutely believe that mental conditions and things of that nature can be a hereditary genealogical thing. Absolutely, it can. Until um, I started making connections with my ancestors, 
I mean, I probably would have said a bunch of hogwash, but knowing where my bloodline runs, I'm like, well, yep. All right. Makes complete freaking sense why I'm Looney Tune nuts. <laughs> it, it really does. And um, again, I'm blanking out on the name. Case, uh, John Wayne Gacy. Um, you know, me and you know, Lorelai, you know, talked about on, on one of my shows. It was one of her shows, one of our shows um, about the correlation between the habits of his father and the habits of the son. Yeah, that's why I would love to have her on this show because she, that woman's a wealth of knowledge in making oh, these connections. You know, the the amount that she knows on that whole topic. Yeah, you know, so you know, we we brought up the fact. Okay, was the father possessed as well, and then it moved to the child. Mm -hmm. You know, when the father passed away, or what have you. You know, um, you know, was it the same entity or was it a, a separate entity? Um, you know, so many questions got asked. It's it, it it's mind blowing at times if you really think about it. Thanks, Shira. <laughs> hey, girl, how you doing? Yeah, I don't think that uh, you know. I don't think that John ever had a stable relationship. Uh, from everything that I had read, interviews from various folks. Um, I, I don't think he had a developed relationship. There was a theory of a uh, theory. Don't quote me. <laughs> theory and speculation that he was actually homosexual. Um, Again, some with of Casey. that could be proven within the evidence if you looked at the court documents and that's as much as i'm going to say on that um again same thing with gacy you know he he primarily uh outside of the runner and the 13 year old girl Actually, I don't think she was 13. She might have been a little bit younger. He was 13. I apologize. Uh, that he got with the pencil. His victims primarily were male. But again, opportunity. Yeah. Um, that first, you know, the, the first two were females, right? Yeah. And then all the rest of the victims he actually killed were male. Were male. So he tried the females, didn't like them wasn't the right thing didn't get the right vibe from it so he switched and then he well, and I, I think those were almost like acts of i don't want to say passion because there's nothing passionate about it but spur of the moment ish like here's okay. my opportunity i'm gonna do it um or let's see how this goes you know kind of a thing i don't think i don't know that would have been a good question to get an answer to yeah my mind rolls over and over and over and over yeah Heather exactly uh you know as far as being the sexual in nature it it <clears throat> uh what I know about um the crime scenes. Uh, I, unfortunately, I, I do have the pictures, and they're not. It's a very telltale. It's a very obvious thing. Uh, save for you know Ricky Stetson. Um, I don't think anything sexual in gravitation happened there. But, you know, he was also early on in his career. On yeah. his path. I don't even want to say career. On his path. Path, yeah. What could have happened if he didn't get caught? If that mm -hmm. teacher would not have made that phone call, what what could have happened? How many more victims could there have been? Right. You know, and he was doing all of this in the, you know, in the early morning hours. Um, hence the reason why they're like, oh, yeah, no we can correlate all the times that you've left your dorm 
here um, at Offit, but you know, when you're up that early and you're in the Air Force, they really don't question as heavily as they do now, obviously. I've been detained there at those uh, gates a few yep, times. Yep, me too. <laughs> Why are you here? I'm gonna visit That's probably this actually the only location we're not going to be able to hit is because one of them, uh, one of the bodies was on just off of base property, but now it is considered base property. Base property. So access to that is going to be as close as you're going to get is the highway. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Depending. Depending right. on how much they've cleaned up since the flooding, too. Right. Over there. We shall see, though. Yeah, that's a good point. I have thought about that. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> there you go. Three six nine three six nine theory google it punch it in oh yeah search yeah. it look at it and how funny that the park in memorial to the boys is on six nine street 69th it's on my street <laughs> what year was that born girl the summer of 69 actually the fall but <laughs> 1969 11s kept coming up. I'm born 11, 11, 69. You see all these correlations. See, we were supposed to be connected. I live on 69th Street. You were born in 69. Brian Adams wrote a really great song about it. <laughs> I live at the corner of 11th and K. K is the 11th letter. So I literally live at the corner of 11, 11, while being born on 11, 11. And when we moved here, we did. I didn't see the correlation. Yeah, sometimes yeah. things don't connect until later, <laughs> and you go, oh. But there, there's so many correlations between his numbers and my numbers, it's really starting to fry the little thing that's inside right. his skull. And, 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 you know, again, just, just to run the numbers for anybody who happened to come in late, he was born July 2nd of 1963. He was executed July 16th of 96, both under a cancer sign. 369. Um, when he was apprehended, he was arrested on uh, January 11th of 84. He wasn't actually like apprehended, convicted, hey, we're keeping you until the next day, which would have been the 12th. In 79 is when he stabbed his first victim first two victims because he did them consecutively. Mm -hmm. He did the, uh, the pencil stabbing. And then the very next day he used the razor blade on the biker on August 22nd of 82. Uh, that's when he killed Ricky in September 18th of 83. That's when he murdered Danny December 2nd of 83 is when he murdered Christopher. And for all of them, the, the strange correlation, um, they didn't find Ricky. I think Ricky was found maybe two days after his murder. Uh, for Danny, they didn't find Danny until three days after. And then also with Christopher, he was found two days after. And again, Danny, the connection with him is he was four miles from his bike. An exact, not even short by an inch, or a millimeter or a centimeter. Four exact miles from his bike. Interesting. Um, two and three is five. Three and two is five. Fifty-five, double change. Something was going to change. He was going to change his limo. He was going to change the way he did things. But then he got caught. And he changed his location from when he first started. It's all about change. Gradual change. Yeah, I mean, when his parents got divorced, he started out in Massachusetts, transplanted over to Maine. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think he has any other states in between Maine and here. I think his career from the military got into the military. I never looked at his boot camp logs or anything like that. 
That would be, I'm going to write that down. Cause that's going to be another interesting thing to. Yeah. Because if, if he left base, which would be shown by those logs, are there any missing children during that time? Exactly. So wherever he was doing training or boot camp or anything like that, or maybe off it was just where he went, maybe, you know, maybe there was no go between, but right. I'm going to look. <laughs> I don't I know why I didn't to. think about that. <laughs> I think we need to. See, there's reasons why we're doing this. Yeah, we and may, so the whole we may give goal, closure to somebody. We may give closure to somebody. Right. The whole goal with starting all of this, you know, again, why we titled it The Forgotten is because, you know, there are many cold cases that largely don't really get connected just because of change of location. Uh, not to throw in the connection and this, you know, isn't necessarily with, within my radar, but, uh, there is a theory out there that there is a connection in between the Velisca Axe murder house and even Malvern Manor because of the rail station. Yeah. You know, um, again, how many of those things go largely unnoticed, but by talking about this, if there's similarities, they can always take back those archives and go, oh my gosh, let's reopen this. This exactly. could be a connection, something we didn't think about. And and a lot of people don't really look at what they call the low profile killers because their career was ended really early. But was it? Right. Again, we said it earlier, you know, how many of these secrets are going to go down with them? Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, and that's each serial killer. Mm -hmm. Each freaking one. Oh, see, yep. yep. Throw Renee's comment up there, because yeah, he's he's God. He was in Vermont. So, you know, again, how many do you have access to? You don't really know. Right. He obviously had a couple month pattern when it came to, you know, once he started, it was, you know, my goodness, September to December. What really happened long. in between August of 82 and September of 83? A lot yeah. could happened. Look at where we are in the time frame right now. We just ended September. We're working to November or December. What, what, what are the odds of that happening? Right. Seriously, what are the odds of that? That time frame sinking. That is funny. This, this is why is we talk so much. This is something we're supposed to be doing. Just saying. Wait for it. And yes, those three words just came out of my mouth. Wait for it. Those three words always come out. <laughs> what happens? So, when does anybody else have anything that they, you know, want to share, impart? Any more questions, curiosities? And again, I said it Monday night, but I'll say it again right here. Uh, if you have somebody in mind that you want to be on the show, uh, you know, if you're a crime junkie such as myself, uh, message me. I want to keep the name a secret. She's uh, even keeping it a show. secret from me. Yep, I'm even keeping it a secret from Keith so that we have, you know, a very productive and conducive conversation on it. I'm coming in blind. But but yeah, shoot me a friend request. Shoot me a message. Otters Den, Cobra Paranormal, either or. I will get it. And uh, let us know. Let us know what you want to know. Ah, thank you, Heather. Yes, thank you, Heather. And this is our first show. We're just getting started. We're just We're just figuring out how to do this. So wait for it. Yeah. And, you know, and if you have a suggestion and it's one that, you know, that you want, hop on and collaborate with us. I would absolutely welcome 
Yeah, I can bring up to 10 people on. So yeah, if you have somebody that, you know, you just overall feel like needs to be a, a name that gets brought up upon our list of folks that I've got lined up, I will certainly have not an issue bumping one up. And uh, perfect. And we'll collaborate. We'll get you on the show. We'll have these wonderful mind-bending conversations. I my my I like my mind bent. I'm gonna leave that comment right there. <laughs> oh, there's Holly. She got a signal finally. Hey, girl, how you doing? Hi, Holly. Everybody, I gotta throw out Holly Morseman is a member of the Storm Mechanics. She came up from Kentucky, and she is one that got to help me when I had my paranormal issues. So I gotta throw you a little bone there, Holly. Thank you very much again, just got to say. And uh, I, you missed most of this. I just got to tell you right now. Um, we were talking about um, John, right? John Jubert? John Jubert, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, lesser known serial killer. That's what this show is about. Um, the correlation, the numbers between him and I are, in, in my mind anyway, astounding. Um, I think I'm going to see a lot more correlations with a lot more people. So I'm really going to be running through this mind and clearing some things out. So I may need to talk sometime. Just saying. Just giving you a heads up. At least Wait, there's a warning nudge. there. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? Yeah. Nudge, nudge. <laughs> oh, what was that off of? Um, Monty Python's Flying Circus, I think. Wait, wait, not, not, not me, not me. Yep. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I, I can picture the castle scene where they're trying to, to yeah, I'm not even going to go there. Not even going to go there. <laughs> All right. Well, when, if we do Saturday um, and, and we get out to those locations, does anybody want us to go live when we go? We can. It won't be in this particular format because um, the, the phone just doesn't have the connection capability to run two people at the same time, but we can hand the phone to each other. Yeah, we'll be together. It'll just be Facebook Live off of the Outer Den. Perfect. Keith, we need to set up a time. So we will... Uh... We'll get it figured out. Yeah. Um, and I will put it out on the Otter's Den page. How's that? And I'm pretty sure, Heather, you like the Otter's Den page, right? You already liked it, so you get the, the notifications. Okay, we can do that. Like I said, yeah, I'll, we'll put it out on the Otter's Den page, and then naturally I'll share it on my own. Um, that way everybody gets to see it, and... Maybe we can get some stuff figured out. Maybe yeah. somebody out there, you know, with gifts, you know, like like Holly, um, might be able to, you know, hear something, feel something, see something. Hint, girl. <laughs> Hint. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so subtle, aren't I? I am so subtle. You don't even know I'm doing it. That's <laughs> Plant the seed, water, <laughs> hit it with I, a shovel. <laughs> I had some seeds planted the other night. Never mind, I'm not going there. <laughs> reading, psychic reading, psychic reading. Clarify. Yes, yes. Oh, you know what's funny? I didn't even notice this until now. So we were talking about uh, the rope, the thread that connected, you know, everything pretty much together. Yeah. It was red, right? Whoa, stop. Stop right there. Son of a mustard and biscuits. <laughs> the red straws. Oh yeah. How long have I been finding red straws? Looks like red rope. Well right here. Saying. Right right up here in the corner. Um on my stream yard where it says how long we've been live. Okay, red pen looks like a red straw. Um, 
I, I wish I could like show this, but where it says live and how much time, it's a red bar. It looks like a red yeah. straw. This this is why I've been seeing this. They were trying to tell me to do this, and I didn't get it until right now. See, these are the synchronicities we were talking about. <laughs> Boom, mind blown. And see, it, when it hits you, it, it's overwhelming. Once you finally get why they kept throwing a red straw at you, kept guiding you on a country road to a red straw. Oh, Heather, good point. Did you see Heather's comment? <sighs> <laughs> we can't make this crap up <laughs> even if we wanted to yeah, oh my we, goodness okay mean, so I've I jotted Jenny down talk. quick notes too and I had asked Jenya to get me um, a piece of paper so I could have all the dates and stuff because that was important to me to have before you know so you could have the dates is it red It's freaking red. His birth, his death date, and his prime dates are in red. Are in red. And a red sentence looks like a red straw. That's. Oh Lord. Wait. Something's it gonna gets come out. better. Wait. There's more. You know what I've been saving, and I really don't know why because I don't need all of them. I've got a ton of them out in the garage. I don't need them. Wait for it. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Look. Containers. <laughs> my red can. <laughs> Wait. You want to see my mouse? <laughs> it looks like a red straw. <laughs> oh my gosh, Keith, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look what color my lighter is. You have a yellow lighter. Why do you have a yellow lighter? Yellow lighters are bad luck. Never have I've always yellow. had it. I've had it for like a year now, but... Okay, we're going to have to have a discussion on the yellow lighter. We'll leave that alone for now. Um, Holly saw it. Holly saw the yellow lighter. See? Look. Yep. <laughs> but but I've never had bad luck with it. It's almost right. empty. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. We'll talk later. Okay. <laughs> You've never noticed that? I've had this on at least the last five investigations that we've been on. Never. I've never noticed it. Wow. Never, ever. Oh, the the likes and the hearts in the black line that look like a black straw. That would be purple. I know what that means. All right. Well, we... Uh... If there's no more questions or anything, we will get ready to wrap her up here for the night. And yeah, Saturday, we've been, um, we'll make a plan. By tomorrow, we should have some times nailed down for you. Yeah, we've been on for almost two hours. I I, know. Uh, it was right there, 153.33. 153.33. And there's nine and three. Nine watching, three hearts. Numbers. And then I just look over there, six, three, six, nine. Again, seriously, people, Google three, six, nine. Yep. Until you find it, you will find it. I'm going to stop <laughs> going. We'll be here all night. I'll get into conspiracy theories. And that's and, for the other page. Save it for later. And, 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 and numbers and planets and aliens and the government and I'm just gonna stop hammer time <laughs> that <laughs> all right 
Thank you for everybody for hanging out with us tonight. Yes. For hanging out and being groovy. Oh, wait, that's the other show. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here discussing some really weird stuff with us tonight, okay? You know, um, uh, Renee, there it is. Mine's 11. Yep. Mine's 11. Think I'm a three. Yeah. Um, Heather threw something up. Um, you know, she threw up earlier her uh, the last digits of her social security number were six yep. and six, um, and then a zero. Um, I see that totally different. You know, I get what the Bible says. I get what everybody thinks, but I see six 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 is not a bad number. I see it as a good number. Um. And I had it all figured out. I mean, I worked it out. I had it on, I got it on paper somewhere. Um, it had, I Somehow I got 11s out of it. I don't remember right now how I did it, but I did. And my last phone number, 8061227, somehow I kept getting to change my phone number. Change your phone number and it's going to happen. If you change your number, it will happen. So I changed my phone number and all of a sudden I had these doors open. So I, I wrote my phone number down and I started working things and somehow I ended up in at, at 666 and then I worked it out. And once I changed my phone number, doors opened and you want to say something, girl, say it. So my number, my phone number growing up was 3393699. I kid you not. Yeah. <laughs> three, three, nine, three, six, nine, nine. The cricket's going off in the background because I got no words. I know, he's, he's walking right by the door. <laughs> what did I have in my garage last night? Cricket. Um, we, we, we got a we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of homework to do. We got a lot of learning to do. There's some stuff coming up that we got to be ready for. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Yes. So thank you everyone. Seriously for hanging out. Rabbit hole. Boom. Yes. <laughs> Send me those messages. And like I said, we would love to have you on the show. Love to collaborate all of this. I mean, that's that's the whole goal is to reach the audience and give you what you want. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I upgraded so I can have a potential on here. Um, you know, if I have to take this downstairs and hook a hard wire and do it for bandwidth, I can do that. So it won't take very long. It's me picking it up, carrying it downstairs, setting it down and plugging in a wire. I can do that. Plug in a wire. Mustard and biscuits. <laughs> um, no, Holly, I don't. I don't have a TV or a radio on. No, ma'am. In the garage with a cricket. One lone cricket. I got the windows open and there's like vehicles going by and stuff. But I'm rocking in my chair. I was rocking earlier. I always rock in my old lady chair. Just like this. <laughs> in my That's dad's stuff. garage. I said the garage is a great atmosphere to talk about all this stuff. So we're talking about it in the garage. And see, I'm talking about it in the safety of my den, my office. I've got protection over here. I've got protection over here, up there, over here, behind me, in my pockets, down here. I'm surrounded by protection. I believe I have a stake over in the corner of the garage here. Medium well? I wish. Wrong kind of stake, but when we stake the property here. <laughs> I know, I know. Just had to throw a little, little humor in there. <laughs> I do like to have fun and smile and laugh. And, and I tell you, when, I, when I'm doing this, you know, especially with people like Joni, with people like you, with the guests we had on here, I I feel good 
Um, I'm an extrovert. I'm having fun. I'm talking. I get to talk to people that I enjoy talking to. And I go from an introvert, you know, sitting here in my hole in my cave to an extrovert. Even though it's online, I'm, I'm getting to speak with everybody and see everybody and, and communicate with everybody. And it just makes my night and I smile. And by the time I get you know done with these things, you know, my mood is so elevated. It, it's freaking awesome. And I just want to you know thank everybody for helping me with that. Yeah. I mean, he's been trying for quite a long time to get me on video because I'm very much the quiet team member. <laughs> there she is. Look, I got her. I got her. And she rocked it. <laughs> she rocked it. And my vibration is still way up here because, you know, talking about all of that crap will bring you rather low. Right. So and that's another reason to bring rinse the humor. This, rinse this off of you. You do not want to hold on to the, the details. No. Yeah. You know, and like I said, you know, that's why I've got protections all the way around me. That's why I'm sitting here doing it. You know, if I got to take the computer downstairs, I'm taking some stuff with me, just saying. Um, because, um, like we talked to Lorelai about, you bring this stuff up, you start talking about it, it, it can give it power. Um, it does. Yeah. It really does. Uh, you know, we witnessed that just through some of, well, me, I know you too, uh, when she was doing some of her videos and such. And I think that was kind of when... I became more aware of being careful of what I say. Yeah. Holmes was what coming. I think, you know, uh, th those instances, she's, she's, she taught me quite a bit going down the, that path there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Heather. It's greatly yeah. appreciated. Um, with any luck, we're going to have some more, more shows like this where we get to get to do this with you, and and maybe, maybe we'll come up with something that law enforcement didn't come up with. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to help somebody. That that's that's at least my goal. Um, as you can't see it, but my hair is raising up on my arm and my shoulders. Just what have I always that. like when we started talking about this? What have I always said to you? I want to be the person that cracks the zodiac. Well, you know, oh, don't say that again because my whole body just went. My whole body. Not a good flush. My shoulders up. Okay, we'll say that. My shoulders up just went off. Boom. <laughs> Mustard and biscuits moment. Mustard and biscuits. That is going to become quite the trend on our show, Mustard and Biscuits. Ain't got no gas in it. <laughs> My very own Rain Man. <laughs> Longmore Man. Longmore Man. Rain Man is Walmart sucks. <laughs> Walmart does suck, though. <laughs> When I have to walk out of there, I have to pull the whole bag of Epsom salt down all over. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. I got two bags sitting in the bathroom by the tub of weight. I, mean, I always make it a habit to go to the neighborhood Walmart, which is the smaller version of the superstore, because mm -hmm. I cannot do that. I cannot. Okay, no. when I when I come up. We're going to go into Walmart and I'm going to teach you the energetic shielding so you can walk in, get your shit and get the out. As Walter would say. Yes. <laughs> Walter. <laughs> it, it's, it's awesome when you can clear an aisle just by walking down it with your with your shielding around you. I know usually I have to like send you a message. Bad day. Yeah. Cookie monster. <laughs> yes. You know, people will be sitting there, you know, in the middle of the aisle on their phone or talking to somebody and you throw that energy out and you start walking towards them and they're like, and they just start going. So yeah, completely on topic yet off topic. Cause this is not our topic at all. But, uh, 
did I ever tell you the story about um, the gal that I was going to literally like kick her butt in the middle of Walmart? I don't think so. I was irritated. I was looking for a watch and I hate it when people stare at me. I just can't handle it sometimes because especially when you know like oh gosh this is gonna be such a <laughs> it was I an just, aha moment i just smile and wave at him start talking to him mm. like and they well, walk off so here i am i'm like you know looking at these watches i'm like why why won't this person just leave me alone like i'm minding my own business right so i get up enough gumption to say something to this completely unknown person and i look up and I realize that I am standing in front of a mirror. Are you serious? That was on the top of the freaking display. Ah. It was me. I was looking at myself. <laughs> okay. Well, then you need to figure out what issue you have with yourself by looking in the mirror. <laughs> That's shadow work, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to beat her up, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People are going to think we're nuts by the time we get done with all this stuff. I, know. I don't care. I am. I'm proud of it. I own it. Claimed. <laughs> yes, claimed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's Holly. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, Holly. It was sad. It's a very sad afternoon. <laughs> yeah, Renee, um, some of the stones we're going to suggest for you, um, they're going to help with that Walmart situation. Yes, girl, yes. Um, one of them, I'm, I'm going to show you one of them right now. Hang on, I got it right here, actually. Pyrite. Get you a big old chunk of pyrite. This is a stone that can block like no other's mother. It's going to block people's energy. It's going to block negativity. It's a blocking. You know, you, you combine this with, um, excuse me while I whip this out. Put the mustard away. <laughs> You know, a, a good piece of black onyx and like a clear quartz. And and that's that's good protection, um, not only from the, the paranormal, the metaphysical, but also from negative people. Yeah. If I got to go out in public and I'm, I'm not in the mood to deal with people, that goes in my pocket. People will walk up to talk to me and I don't want to talk to them. They'll look at me and it's like, you know, Four to five feet, they're like they stop, and and they just go the other way. It, it's it's phenomenal, but it'll also block some of your guys too. So you got to kind of be careful. You have to decide. Okay, I just yeah. need to block everything out today. I need I need a break. I need a day. Yeah. Uh, so you know that little obsidian pyramid that you gave Virginia. Yes. Uh, she refers to that as her little pew pewer. Her what? A pew pewer. Pew pewer. Pew, oh, pew. Pew, pew. <laughs> because it's a pyramid and it has a pointed top. So if she she believes that if she faces that point at somebody, it's going to pew pew away their negative grossies. Is she shooting people? I think she is. That <laughs> That's not what that that was not the. We're, we're gonna have to talk to that girl. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, well, actually, I don't get that little girl on a vid chat with Holly. You're not wrong. You know, uh, I think that Holly could help her far more than Mama. I, I, I don't doubt her world is very colorful, and she's a sponge. Yes, she is. <laughs> but speaking of little girls. I've got to go get her ready because tomorrow she still has school. <laughs> yes. And I need to get out of the garage and get some work done yet. Um, which is one of the texts that came through on here. How's the engine coming? So. Yes. Duty calls. Yes. 
Not Call of Duty. Not Call of Duty. Or Duty. Not, 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 not got to take a duty. <laughs> duty calls. Duty calls. All right. On that note, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you, everybody, for joining in and having some fun with us and, and, and just general BS about some stuff. So um, it's appreciated. Um, are we going to do this every Thursday? Every every other? Thursday. Okay. All right. Every Thursday. We're doing this every freaking Thursday. Every Thursday, I will have something new and fresh that we all can talk about. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Central. Yeah. Central. We're in the middle of everybody. Yeah. Literally. Yeah, absolutely. Literally. We are, there is a place in Nebraska that is the center of the United States. So we, we are almost there. So we're, we're, we're going to reach, you know, and and we got people from other countries on here, too, that are going to pop on. So that, that's going to be interesting. You know, I'm sure they're going to have a lot of a lot of uh, uh, questions. And there may be some people that they throw on from their country that we don't even know about. Just saying, I do have a few lined up from the UK. All righty. All righty. We can do this. All right. All right. Thank you for another successful um, trial of me stepping out of my familiar zone. And in the continuation of that, because like I said, she's not telling me who she's going to talk about on these shows. I'm coming in blind, just like everybody else. So this is going to get in. I'm, I'm learning just as much as y'all are. So yeah, if you message the Cobra page or the Otter's Den page for me, because I'm on them both, or you can send me a friend request, just put at the top for Michelle only so he don't do no peeking. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Hang on. I will put quick links up here. That little uh, cricket. I love him. I just want to put him in a little cage next to my bed. <laughs> oh, it wouldn't last long, probably. <laughs> and I know. Put a speaker down here for him so I can hear him at night. That's funny. That's what I meditate to, literally. Crickets. <laughs> Okay, there. Uh, let me know because I'm getting that the errors occurred. Um, I'm it, seeing them pop up. Okay, so both uh, the Cobra Paranormal page and the Otter's Den page. Yep. Okay. And do me a favor. Um, I'm going to throw the, the YouTube link up here too. If you could, go to that. Subscribe. Hit that little bell so you get the notification. That, that's going to help me get that out. Um, I'm trying to get that YouTube page to grow a little bit. So if y'all could help, I would appreciate it very much. Um, so far, the only two people that have jumped on it are Heather tonight and and the, the Quantum Generator. Yeah. Who I'm going to get a hold of and talk to a little bit more because he raised a lot of questions that are up in here that I've been thinking about for a long time and looking into. So it was obviously be meant to happen. Quite the conversation and quite the learning experience, probably for both of us. And if y'all didn't see the comments from the quantum generator, rewatch this and and or you know scroll down, hit all comments and and scroll down. It it, it gets very interesting. And I did throw some comments back. Just to say, hey, I know what you're talking about. All right. Well, we just lost Michelle. Um, are you still there, Michelle? Uh, can you see me? Can nope. Me? Nope. You blacked out. Darn it. But that's okay because we need to jump off here anyway. You got a little girl to go take care of. Yes. <laughs> All right. So once again, thank you, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Um, she's going to go do her thing. I'm going to go do my thing and we will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel, Thursday, seven central. We'll have somebody new to talk about. So thank you again. We'll talk to y'all later. Have a good evening.